No, ladies and gentlemen, today we're going to go off the beaten track to talk about a film fatale, a beautiful uh, lady, voluptuous lady that would have been remembered if she would have would have lived, but because she died such an early age, her momentum, momentum was stopped. A lot of people called her the poor man's Marilyn Monroe from a European perspective, including the infamous incident at the Cannes Film Festival, which shocked everybody because Robert Mitchum was involved. We'll get that to a, a second. So today we're talking about the legend of Simone Silva. Now, she was an Egyptian-born French film actress who appeared in a handful of British B-movies during the 50s. Now, born 15 August 28, she died of a stroke on November 30, 57, allegedly because of severe crash dieting. She was once quoted as saying she would do anything to get into newspapers, was known, however, less for her acting than her voluptuous figure and publicity-seeking activities. She briefly made global headlines following the notorious incident at the 54 Cannes Festival, where she posed topless with Robert Mitchum for photographers, causing a sensation when the photographer's photographs were flashed around the world. Of course, the incident caused several injuries. We'll get into that. Now, born in Cairo to French-Italian parents, she moved to England in 46 after marrying an Englishman, believing that that country would provide opportunities for her <coughs> to be noticed by American talent scouts and give her a better chance to achieve her ultimate goal of making a career in the United States. From the early 50s and her last days, she made a living by posing as a photographic pinup model for the cheese, cheesecake magazines of the era. She broke into British films in 51 with a small and credited non-speaking part in Lady Godiva Rides Again as beauty pageant contestant. This was followed by two more monotonous bed pie roles before she landed a slightly more substantial part in the adventure film South of Algiers. She was fifth billed in the crime drama Escape by Night, then appeared among a lengthy female cast list in a woman's prison drama, The Weak and the Wicked. I've seen that movie. It's pretty freaky. Her, her first and only top billing came as a femme fatale opposite Lloyd Bridgers and the Hammer Films programmer, Third Party Risk. Now, on March 54, Silva traveled to Cannes for the seventh film festival in an attempt to get herself noticed. She succeeded, and the festival organizers awarded her honorary title of Miss Festival 54. She was asked to post for press photographs with Robert Mitchum on the beach of one of the French Riviera's Lorraine's Islands near Cannes. The photo call turned to the story of the festival when she removed her top and posed cupping her bare breasts in her hands while Mitchum played along. Such was the scramble to get the best shots that several photographers were injured in the melee with two reportedly suffering broken limbs. The press loved it and the photographs were published around the world. The festival committee, however, were horrified that they considered a vulgar and cheap publicity stunt had completely overshadowed the serious business of the fortnight, and Silva was asked to leave the festival. Now, upon moving to the U.S., after the Cannes Fuhrer, she traveled to the States hoping to cash in on her newfound notoriety. However, she soon ran afoul with the Immigration Naturalization Service when it was learned that she had entered the country on a tourist visa and not on, had not applied for a work permit although she had been offered a contract by independent filmmaker Al Petker and was receiving a salary. In June 54, the district immigration director in L.A. refused a retroactive application for a work permit, ordering to leave the States within 60 days and observing that she did not make a sufficient showing to conclude if she was a person of unusual ability and talent or professional uh, attainment. Now, the uh, decision was appealed on Silva's behalf by Petker, and she was granted a temporary work permit pending the appeal being heard. Relations with uh, Petker quickly soured, and by November 54, she was hospitalized with severe vomiting, claiming that worry was a root cause of her illness. She also accused Petker of failing to pay her salary, while he countered that he had suspended her for gaining a significant amount of weight. Now, Silva's application to become a permanent U.S. resident was heard on December 3rd, 54, and was denied. She was again given the right of appeal. In February 55, she was again in court when she filed suit against a nightclub in Palm Beach, alleging that they had offered her a contract for seven weeks, but had reneged at the end of the first week. Sylvia's final appeal for U.S. residency was heard on May 4, 55, and was again turned down. She was told to leave the country by June 7th or face deportation back to England. Uh, Silva could not be located on June 7th, and it was reported that she had not seen by her lawyer in L.A. for two weeks. It was concluded that she returned to England on her own without no notifying the relevant parties. 
Now, after return to UK, UK, she found it difficult to resurrect her fledgling film career. She made a one more screen appearance, a small role in a low-budget crime picture, The Jelling Genit Gang, in 56. She briefly tried stage acting with little critical success. A performance in Glasgow in June 56 was described as too brass, too strident. Her last two credits was, were two episodes of television adventure serial The Gay Cavalier in early 57. She attempted to garner publicity that time by hinting to journalists that she's playing another stunt for the 57 Cannes Film Festival, but what she planned is unknown and nothing materialized. She was eventually found dead in her London apartment on November 30, 57, at the young age of 29. uh, An autopsy gave the cause of death as a stroke. Her struggles with her weight have been ongoing, and friends believe that her lengthy period of rigorous crash hiding have been a likely factor in her death. Now, a filmography, Le Tempo de Capistan, 50, The Sleepwalker, Lady Godiva Rides Again, The Secret People, Bachelor in Paris, Desperate Moments, Son of Algiers, Turn the Key Softly, Street of Shadows, Escape by Night, The Weak and the Wicked, Duel in the Jungle, Third Party Risk, and the Geligante Ganiti Dan. Now, uh, gang, now I really, I've seen some of her work and it's very interesting. Uh, not say Eva Gardner, not say Elizabeth Taylor, but uh, a very stunning young woman, very like, you know, d- d- diminutive. Like, I think it was no more than four, I figure three or five, four. But I saw those folders with Robert Mitchum. If anything, they showed in, up in skin magazines. Uh, I think it was either Playboy or there was something, some kind of book talking about Hollywood. But if they weren't nude photos, basically she was cupping her breasts. But you look at the Playboy models. Of the era, if she would have lived, she would have been a playboy, and all that publicity would have been taken care of, because the voluptuous British models, Diana Doors and everybody else, were getting very popular. So if she would have lived, if she would have followed the proper diet, she might have been as big again as Jane Mansfield and maybe Van Dorn. You never know, because at the time, those those large, uh, you know, buxom girls, the pinups, were very strong. During the war and post-war and in Korea, from 1942 or something to about 1954, you know, these, these you know, beauty magazines where the person on the front was not in the magazine, it was just to sell it. And uh, I've seen her picture. She's a beautiful lady, uh, you know, kind of, you know, um, not say chunky, but, you know, well-built, but, you know, a solid woman, thick, as you call it. So, so ladies and gentlemen, uh, Robert Mitchell once said, uh, I don't know who was being taken advantage of, me or her. So it all depends. Everything's from a perspective. So ladies and gentlemen, if you like what you're doing here on our movie podcast, let us know what a like, comment, subscribe, or share. Bye.